Okay guys, so today I'm going to show you how you can add a booking system to any existing website without a single line of code. And you'll end up with a very professional booking form like this one here. So the one behind me is what we are going to build together and this one is for hairdressers, but this will work with any industry. It could be a law firm, an accountant, a yoga lessons, maybe spin classes, gym clubs, etc., etc. Literally any type of industry, you know? So first, you'll be able to select between several locations. Then you can select which staff member you want to look after you. And if they provide multiple services, you can select the one that's of interest to you, obviously. And then you can add extras as well. So this is an option. Obviously, this is optional. So you can select it or not. And now you can select the date and then your time slot. After this, simply enter your details and voila, you're all done. You've got a new appointment booked already. Okay, so very exciting project indeed. And for this, we are going to use Booknetic. So Booknetic is one of the most powerful booking systems available for WordPress. And yet it is super easy to use, as you will see. Now, price wise, it's not even that expensive considering how powerful this truly is. So this one is available from the Envato marketplace. And as always, I'll leave a link in the description below. Very good. So let's get started. Okay, so the very first step is to install our plugin. So for this, we go to plugins, add new, and we're going to upload our plugin right here. So choose file, and we're going to select this one. So this is the file that you'll be downloading from the Envato marketplace on Booknetic. It will look something similar to this. Then open, install now, and then we need to activate the plugin. And that's it. It's already installed. And now in order to use our plugin, we need to activate the license, obviously, you know, so we go to Booknetic and this is the very first thing that they're going to ask you, what is your purchase code? So you just paste it here and then you can select where you found them. So let's say from YouTube, if you found it through myself, you can put your email address here. So hello at mrwebreviews.com. Okay. And then click install. And there you go, guys. As you can see, you get your own dashboard. So this is the, the thing that struck me first when I installed this the very first time when I tried it out, is that you get your own dashboard. So basically, this is installed on WordPress, but this is not part of the WordPress dashboard. It's separate, which is very nice because all the tools necessary to set this up and also check your payments, your bookings, etc., etc., all the appointments, all of that is in the same place, which is very nice. It's a nice touch, to be honest, you know, and you have a quick overview of everything from the same dashboard. Now you can easily go back to WordPress. As you can see, I have a button here, so click on this. And as you can see, now we go back to the WordPress dashboard. So we can switch from one to the other just by clicking on the Booknetic tab here. And there you go. We're back to our Booknetic dashboard. So to set this up is actually quite intuitive. It's very easy. They thought of everything to do this in a very nice way. It is very user friendly. As you can see by the side, we have the starting guide. So you can't really go wrong. You have to enter your company details, set the business hours, create locations. If you have multiple locations, add your staffs and then create your services. So this is very easy for us to follow along, isn't it? And I'm going to show you how this works step by step. So first, let's have a look at our website. So as mentioned, you can install it on any type of website, any type of business. It will work. It's a uh, multi-purpose basically. Okay. So we have a skincare product uh, website here. Sorry. And we scroll down the page. As you can see, uh, let's say they offer multiple services, maybe makeup, manicure, uh, hairdressing, or maybe waxing and face care or something like this. Okay. So this would be a very nice project to, to take on. And as you can see, we can have different types of bookings, different types of services and probably different staffs as well working for that company. OK, so how do we go about this? Well, let's set this up together now, uh, taking this website as an example, obviously. Again, this is open to any type of project. Uh, you can uh, set this up for any type of business. It could be an accountant. It could be a law firm. Uh, it could be even a mechanic or whatever it is. You know, literally you can uh, fit this. On, install this on any website. So let's go back here now and let's start by entering our company details. So we click on this and as you can see, it's redirecting us automatically to the appropriate page, which is super handy again, you know. So there you go. As you can see here, we have to enter our details. So this is a little bit in the way. So you can click on the small eye here. Or let me hide myself for a second. There you go. So this one here, if you click on this, it will hide 
the menu so you can make it reappear again like this okay so while we work on it it's super easy that way so we're just going to enter our details here very quickly so something like this for instance you know it's just a company name address phone number and website and here you have the option to display a company logo on the booking panel so this is a nice option i would leave it uh, on uh, to be honest you know but again it's up to you and then you can upload the company logo then you know so all you have to do is basically click on this and then you can select your logo so whatever you know whichever logo you have now bear in mind this should be a square type of logo because it will be here in this rounded shape uh, you cannot have a long rectangular one so just bear in mind it has to be square okay and then that's basically it so we can save our changes so that's step number one covered okay so let's take care of step number two so for this we're going to click on the small eye again to make our menu reappear so basically all the steps are right here on the left hand side as well but it's good to follow the starting guide you know so let's click on business hours now and there you go okay very good and then here you can see we have all the different days of the week obviously monday to sunday there it is and then with the different hours and you can add a break as well because maybe you close for lunch you know between uh, 12 and 1 or something like this you know and it could also happen maybe saturday or sunday that you close the whole day you have the whole day off possibly okay which is most likely the case you know so how do we go about this well it's very simple as you can see when do you start your day so it's very simple all you have to do is to select when you start your day so let's say if you start at 8 in the morning for instance you know so you can select between 8 and then by increment of 5 minutes so it could be five past eight ten past eight quarter past eight and so on and so on so let's say you start your day at 8 30 until maybe 5 p.m in the afternoon so this is in 24 hours uh, count here so we're going to put uh, so that would be 17 then 17 is 5 p.m or 17 30 maybe you know or something like that so we just put the usual hours opening hours on a monday and just like we said if you're closed for lunch you can add a break here so maybe you close between 12.30 and perhaps uh, 1.30, so 13.30 here. And there it is. So that's basically it, okay? And there you go. And maybe you have a second, you can add several breaks as well. So maybe you have a 20 minute breaks in the morning for a tea break or something like this. Maybe one in the afternoon or something like that. You can add as many as you, as you, as you need, obviously, you know? And then you can do the same, obviously, with all the different days of the week. So maybe you are closed altogether on Sunday, so there's no appointments to be booked, obviously, you know, so you can uh, take this one all together. And maybe Saturday, it, maybe it's just a half day, or maybe you start later on Saturday. So let's say on Saturday, you start at 10 in the morning or half 10, so 10.30. And let's say you finish early, maybe four in the afternoon, so 16 in this case, okay? So there you go. And that's it, basically. So do this with all the days of the week. So there you go, something like this, you know, so I did that very quickly here. So I have all the same days, 8.30, 17.30, a break between half 12 and half 1. And then we are closed on Sunday altogether and a shorter day on Saturday. Then when you finish, don't forget to click save here, okay? So click on save changes and that's it. That's us done for the hours now. Now let's have a quick look at the next step. So we click on our eye here. So create location. This is the next step. Very good. So now from here, what do we do? Well, very simply, we are going to add a location. So all you have to do is click on this. So now, depending on the type of business that you run, you might have several locations, uh, maybe just the one. And either way, it will work fine, okay? So let's give this a name. So let's say you're based in New York and you have uh, one location in on Fifth Avenue and maybe one on 22nd Avenue and so on, so on, so on. So let's go ahead with this, okay? So let's pretend the first one is on Fifth Avenue and then you can upload an image so this could be your logo or maybe an image of the front of the the building etc etc so this is really up to you you don't have to but uh, you can of course but just for the sake of our tutorial let's do this together okay so let's browse let's select one so i found a picture here online a random picture of the, on the fifth avenue you know so let's add the address here so let's say uh, the address would be so 1455 Fifth Avenue, New York at 1001. So this is, I believe, the code for Central New York. And as you can see, we don't have uh, the Google Map loading here. So what do we need to do? We need to actually up upload and add an API key. So first, let's finish our location here and then we'll come back to this. Okay, I'm going to show you how to create the API in a minute. So let's put our phone number here. So 01234 for instance, you know, and you can put a small description. So maybe a, a beauty shop on Fifth Avenue, you know, or something like this. So add location. 
There you go. So this is our very first one. And then you can do so with multiple locations. So there you go. I've created just a second one here. Okay. Let's say you have two spots, uh, two shops in uh, New York, maybe on the 5th and then on 22nd. Now, let me show you how you can create the Google Maps API key. So for this, I'll leave a link in the description below, but you need to access this uh, URL here, uh, console.cloud.google.com forward slash Google forward slash Maps API forward slash and that's it okay so once you get there you will have access to this page normally here on top you have a create immediately create new project i have a few projects from previous uh, tutorials obviously here so all you have to do is click on new project but this one will be straight up here for you okay so let's click on this and let's give it a name so let's call this uh, simply booknetic okay you don't have to select any organization here just click create and here, as you can see, we're presented with a few different options. So we need to enable a few of them so you can close this all together. There you go. That's just a notification. And from here, we need the Maps JavaScript API. So where is this one? This is the one here. So click on this. Now we need to enable that one. And there's three of them in total. So this is the first one. Okay. So our next one is Maps Static API. So let's locate this Maps Static API. There it is. So let's click on this enable that one as well and then finally the last one is street view static api this is the one there and we enable this again okay perfect so this is step number one and now we need to create our api key so for this we go to credentials okay and we need to create a new api key so click on create credentials api key now it is creating our api key now we can just copy this and we can paste it in our backend now. So let's do this first. So we go back to Booknetic here. We go to Settings, General Settings, and again, General Settings here. And as you can see, we have the Google Maps API key. So paste this here, so Control V, and don't forget to save. So I think that's right on top here, Save Changes. So if we go back here and then we close, as you can see, we have a warning sign. So that means that there's something to be done now. So let's click on this, edit. Very good. And now we need to restrict that key, okay? So basically, what does that mean? Well, it's just for security measures. You know, uh, Google are very strict now, obviously. So what we need to do is to restrict this to either a specific web address like we have here and also restrict this to specific API restrictions, okay? So first, we're going to select HTTP referrals here and we are going to add our web address. And for this, we are going to fetch our domain name. So we go back to our website here and we're just going to select the domain name itself. So we are not going to use the HTTP, HTTPS at the front or the trading slash, just the domain name itself, okay? And now we go back here and we're going to add an item. So the first one, you're going to type star dot your domain name forward slash star. OK, so click done. And now we're going to do the same. Add this time star. Sorry, star. Yeah, your domain name dot com forward slash star. No dot at the, at the start. OK, so that's it. That's basically it. Now you, you, you save with this enough. And then we're going to restrict the key now to the, the APIs we selected earlier on, the one, the, those we enabled. So the first one was Maps. Uh, this is the one, Maps JavaScript. We have Maps Static as well. And we have the Street View. So these are the three APIs we enabled. So I'll click OK. And that's it. Now click Save. And all going well. It should work in our backend now. So let's go and check this together. OK, so let's go back to our website and let's refresh. Very good. And now let's edit the Fifth Avenue one again. And as you can see, our map is displaying now. So I've tried it several times. I don't know why, but if I uh, copy this back here, Control V, normally I would assume that it would find the address automatically. It's not doing it for me, so I don't know why. Maybe that's a glitch in the system. But anyways, it's still fine. You know, what you can do basically is to locate manually. As you can see, you have to place that uh, marker somewhere on the map itself. So let's go to New York here and let's try to locate. Let's say uh, you right here. Okay, I don't know. Uh, let, let's save this one here. Okay, and you on Malta Street here. Okay, so you're just going to put the, the, the marker here and that's it. Okay, and then click save. And that's basically it. So that's just done for the locations now. Okay, so next, what do we have? We have our create staff. So these, these are our staff members, obviously, you know. So let's add a new staff. 
So this would work with uh, single uh, owned businesses. So if you if it's just yourself working in your business, it's fine. You just enter your name here and that's basically it. If you have multiple staffs working in multiple locations, you can do the same and, and, and do the same steps uh, several times, okay? So the first name here, or well, let's say we have a Jenny, okay? And Jenny, she is, uh, let's say, a makeup artist, okay? So let's say makeup artist. I don't know if that's uh, an actual position, but... Uh, and then we add the email address, so it could be jenny at yourdomainname.com, okay? And then we're going to put a phone number. Maybe she has a direct number. So 01234-5678. And we can add an image as well. So this will be displayed in the front end, obviously. So it'd be nice to upload a nice picture of Jenny. So let's click on Browse then. And let's select the picture. So let's say this is Jenny, okay? And we need to select the location. So where does she work? Does she work on 5th Avenue or 2nd Avenue? So let's select 5th Avenue, but maybe she's working shifts and maybe she's working on 5th Avenue in the morning and maybe on 22nd Avenue in the afternoon. So this is the beauty of the system. You can select multiple locations. There you go, as you can see, okay? So you can select one or multiple. That's up to you, really, all together. And then we need to select the services. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any services set up at the moment. We'll do that in the next step. So we'll have to come back here afterwards to add those services, okay? And then you can add an internal note if you want to, and then add staff. So there you go. Now we have Jenny, and we can do the same with as many employees as we have. Okay, so there you go, guys. As you can see, I've added two staff members here. We have Jenny and Isabella. So feel free to add as many as you have, obviously, you know. So let's go to the next step. So let's click on this. Next is to create our services. So let's click on this. Very good. So from here, you can display this in two different ways, uh, just like we have it on screen or a graphic view. So this is very interesting, actually, the way they did it. Uh, I thought uh, that was very nicely done. And it's a good idea because you can have a visual representation of the business and how uh, things are structured, you know. So again, here we have categories and then services. So let's go back to our website very quickly. As you can see, we offer makeup, manicure, hairstyle, waxing and face care. OK, so maybe uh, makeup and manicure would come under the same category and then hairstyle, waxing and face care could be a different category. And these are three services. So look at it in, in a different way. Maybe uh, these are your different departments and these departments offer different services. OK, so that's basically how it works. OK, so let's create our first one here and let's give it a name. So we click on the plus sign and we need to give it a name. So let's say this one could be the hairdressers department. OK, and then we can add a second one as well. And this one would be the makeup department. OK, or something like that. So underneath this, you have to break this down now in different services. Very simple, okay? So let's uh, enable this. So we click on the uh, green tick marks here. That's it, okay? So this is uh, actually uh, confirmed and enabled now. So we have uh, two different categories. And now let me click on this icon here to center everything. Very good. So the more you add, you can always recenter everything by uh, using this icon here. It's nicely done, isn't it? So now we need to add our services. So we have the hairdressing uh, department and makeup department. So let's click on the plus sign. And as you can see, you can either create a new category or add a service. So you can have different departments broken down on sub departments or something, uh, depending on how big your company is. But uh, I don't think uh, it's necessary. It's maybe over complicating the, the, the process. So let's just add services here. OK, and we need to put the sound of his name right here. So now I'm not that familiar with uh, ladies hairdressing uh, terms and all that. So I'm just going to put a normal haircut here. OK, and this is part of the hairdressers department. So how much would it cost? Let's say maybe $50 or something like this. You know, you can enable a deposit. You can fetch a deposit beforehand if you want to make sure that the if the customer doesn't show up, at least you get paid for your time, you know, or something like this. So the duration. So how long does it take normally? I don't know, maybe. 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or maybe up to an hour. So select how long the time slot should be. So let's go maybe with 45 minutes altogether. And then the time slot length, you decide yourself here. So this could be the same as the duration. So if you say the duration of the appointment should be 45 minutes, your time slot is the same. Or you can have a longer time slot. This is really up to you, okay? So I'm just gonna select the same as the duration. And then you can have a buffer time before and after. 
So, for instance, maybe you have to clean the place before uh, you, uh, you, you, you get the new next customer, you know, for the next haircut. Uh, now, again, this is uh, built uh, to accommodate all types of businesses. So this could be for a dental practice. So if you're a dentist, maybe you need to disinfect uh, things before uh, you, you can get the next customer, the next client, you know, so you can set up a buffer time before and after. So I'm just going to leave it as is for now, you know, so maybe zero and zero after, which is fine. And then there's a very handy feature here. You have the recurring uh, feature here. So let's say for a hairdresser, uh, normally you do that every, I don't know, two weeks, maybe every month or something like this, you know? So if you take this, basically, it will provide the opportunity to your customers to choose multiple days while making the appointment. So I could book maybe this week and then in three weeks time, and then so on maybe in a month, a month time or something like this. Okay, so this is a very handy feature again. Now we have the capacity here. So normally for hairdressers is alone. Uh, you're gonna just cut my hair or on your customers hair, you know? But it could be a group. Maybe uh, it is a gym class, a spin class, maybe a yoga classes or something like this, in which case you have a group and then you can set the maximum capacity as well. So it's a group of maybe, if it's a spin class, you have 12 bikes, it's a maximum of 12 people, okay? So in our case here, we're gonna select alone. And now for this service, we need to select the staff, okay? So here we have Jenny or Isabella. So let's say Jenny. And let's say Jenny is more qualified than Isabella. Maybe both of them do the same, provide the same service. You know, maybe Jenny is a senior expert in her field or something like this. Isabella is just junior or something like this. You can even set different prices. Oh, so let's select Jenny here. And let's say Jenny charges $80 per uh, service, okay? And you can also add Isabella, for instance, and Isabella, it's only $50, okay? Or something like this. So it's very flexible indeed, as you can see. Now, maybe Jenny walks only in the morning, Isabella walks in the afternoon at that location, then you can set up timesheet as well. So how do you do this? Go to timesheet. So now if we enable this, we have specific timesheet for herself. If you enable this, it will fetch our opening hours that we set up earlier on. And now you can tweak this around to fit Isabella or Jenny's uh, timesheet, obviously, you know. So maybe Isabella or, or Jenny, sorry, here on the Monday, she comes at half eight, but maybe she's finished maybe at 12.30 just before lunch, maybe 12.20, okay? And then she goes on a break. And then maybe you can do the same. Maybe on Tuesday, she's only there in the afternoon. So maybe she starts at 13.30 just after the break. So five past one, maybe, okay? So this is basically it for this. Now we have the extras as well. So this could be anything really, you know? So maybe you have a normal haircut, but before the haircut, maybe you can wash the hair or maybe you offer shampoo and conditioner or something like this, you know, uh, you could have this. So maximum quantity, maybe just one per appointment and the shampoo and conditioner, it could be free or it could be included uh, an extra cost, maybe $15 extra, you know. So how long will it last? Maybe 10, 15 minutes. OK, and then you can save the extra. So that's basically it. OK, so you can add extra to your actual service. And then if you go into the settings here, you can enable some payment method as well if you want a deposit paid beforehand to secure the appointment. So that's it basically. So now we can save this. And as you can see here, we have a visual representation of our staffs as well. So we have uh, Jenny and Isabella, and it's an easy way to find out what your departments are and also what type of services you offer. So it's nicely done, isn't it? And then you can do the same with all your departments. So maybe something like this. So I created one here as well for the makeup department, uh, for for instance, wedding makeup or something like this, okay? And then you can create as many as you need, of course. So there you go, guys. As you can see, these are all our main essential settings. So everything is in place. So we, these are the essentials. So these are the steps you absolutely definitely need to put in place before you can book an appointment, okay? And now we can actually create our booking page, our booking form itself, okay? So for this, we go back to WordPress and we're going to create a new page, okay? So we go to Pages, Add New. So let's give it a title, so Booking Form. And now we can add a block. So if you click anywhere on your page here, you have the plus sign that will show up. You can click on this. And now we can type in Book, okay? So we have Booking Panel and Booking Panel in pop-up. So they're both the same, except that one will show up here by the side, all the, the settings and features. And this one will show up in the pop-up window. So this does the only difference. So you can select either of them. And basically here, as you can see, this is the shortcode 
for our booking form that will be displayed on the page and these are the different settings and you can just leave it as is if you want it to that's fine as well so we can click publish publish and now let's have a quick preview in a new tab and I'm going to show you what it looks like. It looks absolutely fantastic. It's super easy to use and super user friendly. So there you go. As you can see with our logo here and then the different steps. And this is the, the, the selections we can choose from. Okay. So the first uh, step is to select the location. So do you want to go on 5th Avenue or 22nd Avenue? So let's say 5th Avenue. And who's your staff member there? It's only Jenny walking there. So we're going to say Jenny. And then you have different services provided on the 5th Avenue. You have normal haircut and wedding makeup. So which one is it that you need? I need a haircut. Okay, we go there. And then would you like a shampoo and conditioner beforehand? Yes or no? If you don't need it, you can skip immediately. If you want it, just click on it. Okay, and then we go to the next step. Now we can disable this again, cancel it altogether, and then we can move on to the next step, whichever way. So as I said, very easy to use. Next step. There you go. Now we need to select our date. So let's say we're free on Friday around lunchtime, after lunch. Okay. So we're going to select this one here from half one until uh, 25 past two. There you go. And then we can put a name. So let's say uh, the client's name is Amanda Horvath. And then email address and then a phone number. So you can type here maybe, I don't know, 201 505 6612. And then we can go to the next step. Okay. There you go. And then this is just a confirmation. So as you can see, we don't have any payment method at the moment. It's local. So once uh, you show up in their, at their location, you pay on site, obviously, you know. So as you can see, we have a nice overview of our booking. And all we have to do now is just click confirm. Look at this guy. It's beautiful, isn't it? And then thank you for your request. Your confirmation number is 0001. And then from here, your customers can add this to their Google Calendar. As a reminder, they can start a new booking or finish the booking altogether, which is most likely the case, you know. So let's go back to our back end here. And as you can see, if we click on our form here on the short code, uh, let me close this. There you go. These are our settings. You can tweak this around as well. You can choose among different appearances uh, uh, as well and styles. So depending on the color, obviously, of your website, your branding, etc., you might prefer pink, maybe purple, maybe blue, etc, etc. Okay, so let's select pink, for instance. And you can also set pre-selected options on your form as well. For instance, you could have immediately here normal haircut pre-selected. And the same here for your hairdressers department. And already with Jenny. Okay, so let's put this to the test. And, and we select the location on 5th Avenue. There you go, update. Okay, very good. So let's go back to our front end here and refresh. Because you can see now it is pink and we don't have to select anything because we already know that it is Jenny on 5th Avenue who will receive and take care of this. The only thing op op optional here is the extra obviously that we can select or not. And as you can see now the color scheme is following is in, in, in line with our own branding which our website was mainly pink as you can remember. Okay, so that's basically it. So this is a very nice option and super easy to use again. And the beauty of this system is that you can create this short code yourself. You don't need any coding or programming skills at all. All you have to do is to insert the short code right here and then use the side panel here to set it up uh, the way you want it. But once you have it set up, let's say here, you can copy this and paste it into an Elementor page if you wanted to. So let's exit this page and let's find our home page here. So we have this one home. Let's edit this with Elementor. And there it is. So this is our home page and I'm going to show you how easily you can add this to any pages of your website. So let's scroll down here. And as you can see, this is where our price structure is located. So maybe we want to add the booking form just underneath it. So let's create a new section. There you go. And we're going to select full width. Perfect. And now we're going to look for short code here. OK, there it is. So this is the one. Drag and drop it. And now we're going to paste the code that we just copied from the other page. Okay, so Control V, just like this. Now, click Update. Now, let's put this to the test. Okay, so we have a quick preview. Let's go to that page now. And let's scroll down and let's see if this works. And there you go, guys. As you can see, you can insert your booking system, your booking form immediately on any page, wherever you want on your website. Okay, very good. So what if you wanted to get paid immediately up front or even take a deposit, in which case you'll have to install a payment gateway. 
So for this, we go back to our WordPress dashboard. We go to Booknetic. And this time we're going to Settings. And as you can see, we have Payment Settings. So at the moment, the only payment method available is the local one. So this is a paid option. This is an additional option. So if you wanted to get paid via, maybe if you have a, an e-commerce platform already installed, WooCommerce, you can install the WooCommerce payment gateway, all of them. You can use PayPal, you can use Stripe and all of them. So let me show you all you have to do for any additional features. You need to click on the bookstore here. So the bookstore basically is all the additional widget, widgets, all the add-ons. And as you can see, you have a lot of them here. So you have a taxes, you have a custom form, a gift card. You also have coupon codes, etc. But if you select here payment only, so payment gateways, that's the one. As you can see, you can install PayPal, Molly, Stripe, Square and Razor Pay as well. Now, what if you're using, for instance, Amazon Payment or Google Pay, then you can use WooCommerce for this, in which case you'll have to select this one. Again, these are additional, these are add-ons. So feel free to select any of those just to add those features to your website. So there you go, guys. As you can see, it's super easy to use, super practical and packed with features. So this will fit any type of industry, any type of business. Again, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can download this fantastic plugin. It's on the Booknetic plugin. Again, if you found this interesting, don't forget to give us a thumbs up. Maybe subscribe to our channel. Why not? But most importantly, please share this with all of your friends or your Facebook communities and all that so that others can take advantage and benefit from it. Okay, very good. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next video.